Netflix, the number one streaming service in the world. Known for its slick and polished presentation style, it's the perfect company to release a sequel to an almost 50-year-old grimy-as-fuck low-budget horror movie. Now to be fair, Legendary Pictures actually produced the movie, so they took the dump and Netflix smeared it in our eyes. 1974's Texas Chainsaw Massacre is considered one of the original slasher movies, predating Halloween by four years, and it led the charge in a brutal new wave of 70s horror. So if you're wondering whether Legendary came up with a worthy successor, I mean the clue's in the title, but you came to the right video. Let's get into the gore. Leatherface is at large. Sally Hardesty, the sole survivor from the original, has been hunting him for 50 years, and doing a terrible job apparently. Meanwhile, the new cast arrives in a small deserted town, and the movie's dumb plot is revealed. Two chefs want to buy the town and turn it into some sort of snowflake haven, but unfortunately one of the town's inhabitants didn't get the memo, and after the young influencers lay into her, she has a heart attack. Leatherface is apparently not a threat now? and goes with his gran to the hospital. But she dies en route, so he kills the driver in rage, causing a crash. Now he's suddenly his old self again, and the skinning tendencies re-emerge. Poor gran's not immune to a good old skinning, and her face is used as a mask. After the impromptu crafting session, he begins his rampage, but not before an SOS call gets out to Sally. Back in town, some investors have arrived and are scoping out the place, but the local mechanic ruins the fun by taking the bus keys and insists that they can't leave until they prove that they own the granny's house. Leatherface turns up and enacts sweet revenge on the other chef, grabs his beloved chainsaw and goes full-on rampage, starting with one of the girls who's trapped in the house. Is this a visual metaphor for Netflix shitting over the franchise? I'll let you decide. Anyway, she escapes with her sister to the bus, where naturally the other investors are partying. And nobody notices that she literally stinks of raw shit. And after a cringe as fuck joke about cancelling Leatherface, Try anything you cancel, bro. He slaughters them all, but the two sisters get away. Get him, Leatherface! Lori Connor, I mean, Sally finally shows up and traps the girls, using them as bait. She then finds Leatherface, who's just hanging out? And what does she do? Absolutely nothing! Leatherface just casually walks past her and goes after the girls. But then Sally decides she does want to do something after all, but then gets killed! The tragic end of an epic character. The sisters then try a bit of Grand Theft Auto, but Leatherface stops them, and one gets trapped in the car. Before he can make the kill, Sally injures him, and I- What the fuck?! I thought she was dead! <laughs> Anyway, to cut a boring ending short, they just rip off Terminator 2, and Curly Hair pops up to give Leatherface his chainsaw back. As he slowly sinks to a watery grave, he lets out one last dying fart. A fitting end, no doubt. There are so many little messages and comments in this movie, I wouldn't be surprised if it was written by somebody with a split personality disorder. I mean, not even five minutes in and we're bombarded with so many social statements, it's the movie equivalent of an 18-year-old SJW jumping up and down and shouting in your face. Gun victims versus pro-gun activists. Electric cars versus petrol cars. Racist police. Or are they? Confederate flags are offensive. And on and on and on. I've mentioned previously that horror is often at its best when making some sort of underlying commentary or broader statement. But here, it's just commentary for commentary's sake. The movie feels like a fucking Twitter feed filled with a mishmash of opinions from a bunch of fucknuts chirping in with whatever's on their agenda that particular day. There's no coherent voice to see any kind of vision through, and it never commits to anything it's saying, and often contradicts itself. For example, one of the main characters is the survivor of a shooting, and it shows the trauma she's been through. Powerful stuff. But then she learns to handle a gun, and uses one to hunt down Leatherface. I honestly don't know if the movie is pro-gun, anti-gun, or just showing both sides of the argument and sitting on the fence. Another message towards the end of the movie is for the same girl to face her fears, and I thought it could have been a cool moment because it works on two levels her past gun trauma, and the current threat from Leatherface. But then moments later, it's all undone anyway as Leatherface chops her sister's head off and now she's just living in fear again, more fucked up than she was before. 
The electric car versus petrol car was a dumb little statement, but surely they're siding with electric cars. What, we're going out of the way to show the pollution? Well, why the fuck does it highlight the main weakness of electric cars by setting the movie in the desert, where you can't charge the fucking thing? I mean, how did they charge this car? The movie can't even decide who it wants you to root for, either. Some scenes obviously want you to be on Leatherface's side and even feel sorry for him. Other times it wants you to root for the main protagonists. But you can't have it both ways. Especially in a horror movie, there has to be one side and the audience has to be fully on it. You can't flip back and forth between caring for the characters one minute and then wanting Leatherface to stick his chainsaw up their rectum the next. Visually, the movie conflicts with the original, and whilst I appreciate that it may be hard to replicate the aesthetic of 16mm film, Halloween 2018 did a much better job of matching the mood and feel of 1978's Halloween, and pretty much nailed Michael Myers. Whereas Texas Chainsaw doesn't feel anything like the original, and Leatherface has lost a lot of his manic energy. And speaking of Halloween 2018, not only does Texas copy the Halloween 2018 timeline idea, which ignores all but the first movie, it also copies its main character. Twice if you include Gran. But seriously, Sally's character is a blatant ripoff of Laurie Connor from the new Halloween movies, with Sally now being tough as a rusty chainsaw and looking to hunt down Leatherface. The movie also makes the classic mistake of focusing in on Leatherface himself. Unlike Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees or Freddy Krueger, Leatherface was never the central killer. He had a larger family and that's one of the strengths of the original. Without his fucked up family, a huge chunk of the dynamic is missing. But they didn't give a fuck, they just saw that the new Halloweens were making bank and lazily copied the same setup. Most of the Sawyer family survived the first movie, so why not use them? Hell, even Grandad has more charisma than most of this cast. They could have done an interesting reverse, where Sally is actually stalking and killing the family members instead, with a final showdown against Leatherface. But despite all the fuck-ups, there's actually small flashes of originality in some of the scenes, like where the girl kicks the mirror to the side to show where Leatherface is hiding. Visually, the chainsaw through the floor is pretty cool. It sort of reminds me of Jaws' a shark fin cutting through the water. And throwing the chainsaw around to incapacitate people is a nice touch, and it makes up for Leatherface's lack of agility. Gore-wise, things are pretty good too. There's some nice gore effects and some cool kills, although two of them are totally backwards. This girl gets stabbed once in the stomach and dies instantly? Sally basically gets finished Mortal Kombat style. Finish her! Fatality. Leatherface wins. And fucking pops back to life minutes later! There's also a few good ideas scattered around the crap, like the empty town. It could have been really creepy and tense, but the movie doesn't make best use of it. It might have been better to have all the kids run off the bus and then Leatherface can stalk them around the town instead. Although it was ripping off Halloween, Sally being consumed with revenge could have worked out well, but the movie crams in all this shit about buying old buildings and influencers instead, and Sally as a character is left not even half-baked. She's just raw fucking dough. The shooting survivor is interesting too, but not really an idea suited to a Texas Chainsaw movie, which just goes back to my original point that the movie's just a Twitter feed of random voices with no clear direction. And ironically, a post credit scene teases a much more intriguing movie. 2022 is looking to be a great year for horror, with some of the genre's biggest franchises coming back. There's Scream, Halloween Ends, possibly Hellraiser, and even a Jeepers Creepers reboot. But after this shit, I'm pretty demoralized already. You know movies are really struggling when you get Terminator 2 scenes repurposed in a Texas Chainsaw movie. I mean, what the fuck? Netflix? More like wrecked flicks. I got a ton more of these stupid jokes, but I'll see you in the next video, gorehounds.